Degenerates, we are going to recap last night's game. Damn, that was a crazy game. Um, well, I'll get into it in a second here. So I was going to show you the algorithm and all that kind of stuff and the numbers that it spit out and the numbers that actually came out from the game. Relatively close, and then there were some setbacks that just threw the whole damn thing off. So, anyways, we'll get into that in a second. First and foremost, I want to go over some of the line moves just to kind of show you where we're at so far and if there's anything that maybe you want to look into prior to kickoff on Sunday. Uh, so, first of all, one of the uh, earlier picks of the week was the Bills minus 13 and a half. That has moved to minus 14. Uh, not only on Bookmaker, but a lot of spots have it at minus 14. I have seen a few 14 and a halfs pop up. So that means we have about a half a point to a full point in line value on our side, which is great. Uh, same thing with the Rams. We took them at minus 14 early in the week. I know there was some speculation that Tyrod was going to play. That's kind of back and forth because I've heard some people say, yeah, he should play. He's practicing. It's a coin flip. Who knows? Maybe there's a I don't give a shit, honestly. It's the damn Texans. They could put freaking Joe Montana back there. I don't give a shit. Rams are going to kick their ass. It's going to be ugly. Rams are pissed off that they got, I don't know, Sean McVay had, like, some, his wife or something there at the stands, and she had to see him failing miserably against the damn Jared Goff-led Lions. I'm sure he's pissed. So he's going to come out here, and he's going to put a good old ass whipping on the Texans, and he's going to just curb stomp their ass. So I am waiting for the first quarter line on that one. I know I keep doing this every week, and it's actually been pretty, uh, pretty fruitful so far, but bet against the Texans in the first quarter, guys. The Texans typically have pretty slow first quarters. Uh, they really can't get much going on offense on their own. The times that they have won first quarters that they've covered, it's been because of the opponent assisting them. Uh, you go back to the Patriots game where they actually believe they were winning in the first quarter, and the Patriots just could not get out of their own damn way. It was flag after flag after flag, just converting on third downs. And then even last week when the Texans uh, covered the first quarter against the Cardinals, you see the Cardinals had the same issues, just a lot of, you know, shooting themselves in the foot, giving the Texans, uh, you know, early good field position. The Cardinals did get a, a safety. I think that was in the second quarter, but it was the very beginning of the second quarter. And then after that, it would just totally turn around because it was like 5-0, Texans were winning, and then they just couldn't, you know, Cardinals remembered, oh, yeah, that's right, we're the Cardinals, and they whipped their ass. So first quarter against the Texans, the Rams, I've said this before, and I'll say it again, Sean McVay is probably the best coach in the league right now as far as drafting up first quarter possessions or first quarter first possession. The guy always seems to be able to move his team down the field. And maybe he, they don't get the touchdown on the first drive. But if they don't get the touchdown on the first drive, if there's like a three and out, one, it's probably because it was a, stake made, a mistake made. There was some sort of error. There was some timing issue. Something went wrong and threw off this plan. And then they got all jacked up. Secondly, if you see that more times than not, they'll come out with their second possession and they'll go right down the field and they'll score or they'll at least get a field goal out of it. And again... A lot of this is going to come down to execution, kind of the same thing that they did with Jared Goff. Even last year, the Rams were really good at getting into scoring position with their first quarter drives. The problem was Jared Goff would do Jared Goff kind of things, and he would either throw an interception or fumble it or keep the ball too long and take a sack or something. Stafford has been able to avoid a lot of that stuff, but he's still human. There's still errors. There's still timing errors, and because of those, sometimes they get set back. They get behind the six a little too far. But all in all, I'm going to be taking the Rams first quarter. It seems to be Rams minus three and a half for the first quarter because the whole the first half is minus seven. So I would expect the first quarter to be either minus three or minus three and a half. But either way, I think the Rams are the great side, a great pick on that one uh, when the line does come out. And we do have some line value already, about a half point to a full point in some places on the Rams uh, for the full game. Steelers Browns, we got it at under 42 and a half. It's still there at 42 and a half. Uh, Washington plus nine at the Broncos was a tease. It's still at three. The other side of that tease was the 49ers Bears under 45. Uh, it's right now at 39 and a half. So we lost a half point of value on that side of it. So not the best, but sometimes it happens, especially when you're betting so early in the week. Um, one of the picks that we had was the Titans and the Colts. We had the Colts plus seven and a half, and it kind of pisses me off because the other side of that leg was the Cardinals to win the game. And obviously we lost that teaser already because the Cardinals 
I don't know, forgot how to play football or something, but we'll get into that. Uh, the next one, though, was the Steelers plus 10 and the Bengals minus 4.5. We just took that yesterday, so that has not changed any. Um, there were some props that I took last night. I don't like going over those because it's not something that you guys, uh, you know, I don't put all of it here on YouTube, so you don't get to take part in all of that. But let me just say that DeAndre Hopkins getting the flag on that first touchdown cost me a pretty significant amount of money, and it really pissed me off, and I'm kind of mad at the Cardinals right now. So if you see me taking it out on them, that's why. But I still have some good news for them or about them. Uh, let's get into what how we had this handicap beforehand. So we had the Cardinals as about a four-point favorite going into this game. The predicted score was 31 to 28. Now what was the actual score? It was 24 to 21. So the Packers were were within their one deviation. Uh, so they were about four points down. So very close. And had the damn Cardinals not shot themselves in the foot so many times, they probably would have won that damn game. So if you didn't get to watch the full game, and I don't blame you because I know some of you live on different parts of the coast, and you're asleep by like 1 in the morning, and that's fine. In the beginning of the game, the Packers kick off, uh, not the very beginning, but first half. They kick off, Rondell Moore is back there to get the, the kick, uh, and he just totally muffs it. And the damn Packers get the ball on, like, the two-yard line. And somehow or other, the Cardinals are able to make a goal line stand and keep them out. So the, the Packers at that point are up. I think it's 10-7 to because they do kick the field goal there. After that, the next drive down, the Cardinals are throwing. They're on, like, their own five-yard line. Kyler Murray throws it. I, th I believe it's Rondell Moore again, actually. He tips the ball. It gets picked off. The Packers get the ball back on their own or on their damn 10-yard line. They go in, of course. They get a touchdown on that one. So now it's like 17-7. to So it looks like it's very one-sided. It looks like the Packers are just beating the hell out of the Cardinals. In reality, the Cardinals just consistently give these guys the ball on a very short field in like prime scoring position where they are guaranteed a field goal, basically, as long as the kicker knows how to kick straight. And it just... That was already, like, infuriating because I knew I knew that was going to come back and bite us in the ass. Anytime you lose the turnover battle and you're losing those turnovers in the damn red zone for your opponent, it's not going to go well. So after that, here comes the fourth quarter. The Packers are up by three. They're driving down the field. They get to, like, the one-yard line. They get, well, they were going to have only three shots at it or four shots at it, but there's a flag, so they get another set of downs. Then they have four shots. They cannot get in the end zone. Luckily for us, Cardinals are holding them. Cardinals make another goal line stand. And that's literally like on the one this time. Make a great goal line stand. The Packers have gone for it on fourth down, so they don't even get the field goal on it. Cardinals get the ball back. It's like two and a half minutes to go. They're going down the field. No issues. Just pass, pass, pass. Let's get it in there. They get to like the 30-yard line. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, you probably want to – pass here because it's like under a minute now and you don't want to just keep letting this clock run i get it you can tie the game with a field goal but try to get in the end zone right that's what i'm thinking what do they do well let's just run the ball let's run the ball and let's run the ball and then let's do a kyler murray run and then let's do a draw play and we'll run again and let's give it to them they're getting positive yardage on most of these and i think they picked up a first down or they did pick up a first down with a kyler murray run it's going fine the problem is, again, we're inside a minute now, and the clock is ticking, and they're not calling timeouts, and they're running the ball, and they're not getting out of bounds. And so now they're down to, like, 12 seconds, 11 seconds, and they're down on, like, the four-yard line. <laughs> when I'm like, okay, well, you've come this far. You might as well keep running it. They have two timeouts left. Run it. If you don't get in the end zone, you probably got eight seconds left. You call a timeout. You can try one more play. Call your last time out and then take the field goal if you have not gotten in yet, right? Makes sense. You haven't been passing this whole time you've been in the red zone. What do they do? They fucking pass. And apparently me and AJ Green were on the same damn wavelength because he was like, oh, surely we're not going to pass here. Why would I be looking for the ball? We're going to run. So what does he do? He doesn't look for the damn ball. Kyler Murray throws it, and the only person looking for the ball is the defender. So what does the cornerback do? Of course, he comes up with the pick with like 7 or 12 seconds left to go in the game. In the damn end zone, 
They give the ball back to the Packers on the 20. They kneel it. They win the game. What a shit show was that for the Cardinals? How do you turn it over twice in the opponent's red zone? Or, you know, that you're giving them the ball in the red zone. And then, to end the game off, you throw the interception in your own damn end zone. Just, like, a parody of tragedies in this game. It was crazy. It was infuriating. And I would make the damn bet again. I don't know if that's because I'm dumb. It Maybe I'm just in a, in a bad addict. Or, or... Maybe it was the right damn side, and they just didn't execute right. All of that is to say, though, as far as the algorithm is concerned, this 28 points was accurate, I think. Yes, they were gifted basically 10 points, but even if they weren't gifted those, I think one of those drives, they go score on their own anyway. So uh, whether it's 24 or 21, the Packers come out within this deviation. The Cardinals, on the other hand, they put up 21 points with two turnovers and a t- and a interception in the end zone which tells me that they should have probably had at least one more touchdown at least one more which would have put them in the algorithm numbers here or within the one standard deviation as it is they're about one and a half standard deviations away from we expected them or where we expected them to be but what does it matter well next time these teams play which i fully expect them to play in the playoffs Assuming that the seedings match up the right way, they're probably going to match up again. And I'm going to take the Cardinals. The Cardinals, yes, the Packers were shorthanded. The Cardinals also lost DeAndre Hopkins for about a half of the game. I don't believe the Cardinals were prepared. They didn't really know how the Packers were going to react to all of their injuries. It's very hard to game plan. On top of that, you also just, again, as I've been saying, keep trying to give the game away and you eventually did give the game away those errors get corrected the ball doesn't always bounce the Packers direction and in the playoffs if these two teams match up again I do strongly believe the Cardinals come away with this win as long as they do not keep killing themselves so when these two teams match up again I believe the line is going to be much shorter the Packers might even be the favorite because people are going to be looking back to the score of this game Again, it's only week eight, so you still got at least like 10 weeks before the playoffs start, before this game happens again, and people are going to forget all the crazy shit that led to the Packers winning, and all they're going to do is say, oh yeah, these teams met earlier in the year, the Packers won, they're probably the better team. Again, the rematch usually uh, gives a little bit of an edge to the team that lost the first game because they know what adjustments they need to make. Secondly, again, the Cardinals hopefully don't make the same trio of errors that give the Packers the game. Even with Devontae Adams, I don't believe the Packers win this game when they rematch again. And hopefully they will because it was a a fun game to watch, money aside. Uh, Also, really good props last night if you kind of were were on the Packers' side because they really only had like two guys to give the ball to, and it it turned out really well if you're betting the props. Uh, So... That's it for the updates. That's it for the algorithms, numbers, and stuff like that. Uh, one good note, or the kind of the silver lining on this, is that we have one team already kind of outside of their, their algorithm. And like I said, you're about 80% accurate with the algorithm. Uh, there are two teams on by. So we have 24 teams that we should be pretty accurate with this week. Uh, we have, which means that there's about six that we're not. So there's only about five left. That, we, that are going to fall outside of their, their algorithm numbers, or that's what we expect. So everything else should be relatively uh, close or predictable, you know, to some extent, as much as we can predict. Aside from that, though, the one other note I would say, or actually, I'm going to ask you guys this. I have a couple of plays that I really like, but I don't want to keep spreading money out there uh, because realistically, I think probably about three out of five are going to hit. Uh, so I want you guys to tell me, and I, I have my own opinion, but you tell me which one of these you believe is the strongest. And just leave it in the comments below. Um, if you guys feel really strongly about one of these, by all means, take it. Tell your friends you thought of it, whatever, I don't care. I just, I'm on the fence on all of these because I think they're all probably plus EV plays. Uh, but again, I just don't want to have another five wagers out there. So one, of course, is the Rams first quarter. 
Uh, again, I'm expecting it to be the minus three and a half. I really like that one. That's my personal favorite. Next one, uh, the Patriots plus three for the first half. And that's going to be uh, at the Chargers. I uh, kind of went over this before. I really only expect the Patriots to, to lose by, you know, three to seven points. This should be a relatively close game. But I do believe the Patriots running the ball is going to be the difference, and it's probably going to be a slower first half. And if the Patriots can control the tempo, I do think that they either keep it really, really close, like within the three points, or possibly outright win the first half against the Chargers. Uh, secondly, though, or I guess the next one here would be the Saints' first half under 24 and a half. That's the Saints and the Buccaneers. Uh, yeah, I know the Buccaneers' offense is really good. Saints' defense is actually pretty decent, and I do believe they'll be able to slow them down or at least kind of contain them in the first half. Uh, what I think is going to happen here is kind of similar to what we saw last week with the Ravens and the Bengals. Well, on the Bengals' side of the news, they're probably going to have a slower first half where they're kind of, kind of like a boxing you know, analogy, and I love boxing. If anybody out there else is into that, I'm really looking forward to the Canelo fight. It should be up here in like another week, but enough of that. You see these two guys come out, and they're kind of just filling each other out and maybe throwing some jabs and kind of seeing what works, what doesn't. That's probably what you're going to see with this Saints Buccaneers game. The first half, you're going to maybe you'll see a deep shot here or there, but it's probably going to be a lot of like, hey, okay, what, where are you strong? You know, can we really run on this terrible line, or can we can we run against the Buccaneers' good defensive line? And it should be a pretty close, kind of slow first half. And then I think you see both these teams, specifically the Buccaneers, make their adjustments at halftime, come out and go crazy in the second half. So I do believe that first half under 24 and a half is pretty strong. Uh, the Browns' first half under 21. We are already on the Brown Steelers under 42 and a half for the game. I just think that game in general is going to be really, really slow. I think you're going to have a lot of running. I think the Browns are going to try and run Nick Chubb a lot as much as they, you know his calf will allow him. Deanus Johnson's probably going to get involved. On the other side, the Steelers, they don't really trust Big Ben to throw deep anymore, so they're probably going to let Najee take a lot of runs, take a lot of time off the clock, keep the clock running. I think the under-21 goes really well with the under for the full game. I think it's just this is going to be just an under all over the place. Uh, and then the last one is the Colts' money line. The Colts plus 7.5 was really, really good. I really like that. And I'm, like I said, I was very pissed that the Cardinals could not hold up their end of that tease because I really wanted to get to plus 7.5 on the Colts. Um, and I, I do believe they're going to just outright win. And that's actually how we had it predicted. We had this, again... Go back to Monday, and you can watch the videos on Monday. We had this uh, this line here. I was saying should be two and a half. The Colts should be two and a half point favorites. And as far as I know, believe they are now two and a half point favorites. So it's not just me. It's not just my number system. It seems like most of the the uh, bigger betters out there do agree about a two and a half point favorite they're not willing to take it up to three and i have not even seen it touch three i don't think it will get there uh, but the colts at two and a half point favorites i'm really considering just taking the money line i do think this is going to be a close game and i do think it's going to be uh, a colts win by like one point we already have uh, a possibility of being able to tease the titans up to eight and a half if you have another side of a teaser that you want to put in there uh, so that's another cap that's another possibility. But the Colts money line, I believe the money line number right now. Well, screw what I believe. Let's just take a look at it. It's at minus 147. So that is a little high. Uh, hopefully, we'll get some pushback with the Titans. If this falls to like minus 140, that's about my max. I'm not taking any money line over that. Um, so possibly at the minus 140 if it gets there. I, how do you guys feel about those? Any of those picks? Uh, is there one that you feel is really strong, one that you don't like, uh, one that needs to just get totally thrown out? You let me know. Uh, the last thing I would tell you guys, I kind of show you here, is this Cowboys-Vikings game has totally switched. And this is on the news that it doesn't look like Dak is going to play or he's saying that he's very iffy to play because of his calf. Um, I, so I have heard people taking the Vikings money line at the minus 143. Kind of the same thing as the Colts for me. I could see the Vikings winning, but it's still Kirk Cousins in primetime. I still don't trust him. 
Uh, yeah, if Dak is not there, the Cowboys should just straight up lose that game. They should, but crazier shit has happened. Um, and I don't like paying the. I don't like laying the minus one forty three on that. If I was gonna do that, and if Dak gets officially ruled out, I'm probably just laying the Vikings in the two and a half points. If I look that direction at all. So again, just let me know what you guys think. I'm just kind of curious as to what the general consensus is out there. I happen to think all of these plays are actually pretty decent, um, but again, it, it, some of the, some of the time betting is just knowing what not to play. So help me out, guys. Here, I appreciate it. Any thoughts? Anything you can maybe add into it here in the comments is really appreciated. Uh, that's it, guys. That's it. Hopefully, you have a great weekend. Hopefully, you have uh, some good luck. I have lit some candles. I've put some like uh, some witchcraft, some like brujeria stuff for the you know for the Halloween season. It's all like good luck stuff. It's supposed to be like incense that like increases your luckiness. So didn't help us last night with the Cardinals. Hopefully, it'll help us this weekend. Thanks a lot, though, guys. Have a great weekend and good luck.